Of course, I, I can't uh, not to ask the question about the direct, immediate impact and consequences uh, of the war in Ukraine on your countries, migrants, sanctions, energy, transit of gas and oil. And uh, at the same time, uh, I would like to ask you what conclusion to you draw from this impact, these consequences for the medium and long term in the search of other means to guarantee security, stability, sovereignty, and territorial integrity in your countries. China's guarantees for Kazakhstan, European Union membership for Moldova and Georgia on neutrality, non-alignment status. What conclusions do you make in terms of diversification of economic and energy partnership and new transit routes. I will restart again with Mr. Vasilenko. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, the impact of this uh, war, this very tragic war, has been uh, quite strong on Kazakhstan as well. And you mentioned several uh, areas where our economy, our society has been impacted, and this includes indeed the disruption of the Tra traditional uh, technological and transport and logistics chains, uh, the higher, uh, enormously high inf inflation, I would say, of almost 20% already this year, or the influx of the about 100,000 uh, Russian citizens to Kazakhstan, which also created an impact uh, on our labor market. Um, but uh, the way we want to approach this and the way we approach this uh, situation is by focusing on three points. One is uh, building up stronger political institutions. And um, of course, we had our own share of upheaval in uh, the beginning of uh, this year, which prompted uh, uh, our president to went into an overdrive in terms of introducing political reforms. So one, uh, one area is strengthening our political institutions strengthening and the mandate for the president and uh, generally building up a more competitive political system which we think will strengthen the, the country going forward. The second uh, area of focus is a, a stronger economy which is more diversified away from the dependence on um, hydrocarbons which are still 30 years after the beginning of independent development, the major driving force of our economy, unfortunately, and uh, building a more uh, diversified, robust uh, system of uh, international uh, transportation routes uh, that uh, do not rely solely on uh, one route, however beneficial and direct and quick it used to be. I mean, the route, uh, the northern route via Russia which has seen its own share of disruptions and a reduction of 40% of uh, goods transported along this route this year alone. Uh, that is why, along with the EU, we are developing the middle corridor. In fact, that will be the sort of project of the next decade as we build connections to Europe across the Caspian Sea, across South Caucasus, including Azerbaijan and Georgia and then uh, Turkey. And um, the third answer, I think, is uh, by building a a stronger uh, international, uh, international institutions. So we are just as committed uh, as we used to be to the multilateralism and the, um, uh, the institutions that we have been building in our region and globally. Mm. Thank you very much. J just a question. Uh, during the last visit uh, of President Takayev, just after the election in Moscow, uh, there is a kind of energy union that was announced with Kazakhstan, Russia and Uzbekistan. And just a few days after that, it seems that uh, the project uh, ended without starting. Can you explain a little bit what was the idea in the beginning and why it failed? Well, uh, and still is an idea of a, a gas alliance of some sort, because we are, uh, all of our three countries are gas producers. But uh, our idea is to uh, look at it carefully of course, um, since the beginning of the war, we have made it clear that uh, any initiatives that uh, will be seen as helping circumvent the sanctions levied on Russia will not be welcomed by Kazakhstan, and we do not support circumventing the sanctions. But we do not support uh, sanctions as a matter of principle, but that's besides the point at the moment. But uh, our, our idea is to continue to open up our economy through privatization, through attraction of European investments, Western investments, uh, Chinese investments, if you will, 
In fact, after Moscow, uh, President Tokayev visited Paris, where a total of 35 commercial agreements were signed during his visit and during his, uh, following his meeting with President Macron. So that's the answer to your first question about how we want to mm -hmm. diversify and strengthen our economy, given what's going on. Thank you very much. Olga, the, the same, uh, my second question for you uh, about the immediate consequences and uh, the conclusion that you can make uh, for, for uh, the mid and long terms. Russia's war against uh, Ukraine affects Moldova dramatically. Obviously, nothing compares to the suffering that Ukraine is going through. Uh, uh, but in Moldova, it, the, the war on our doorstep affects um, every, every single person. On two occasions, already fragments of missiles landed on our territory. Um, Russian missiles violated our airspace. When Russia is bombing Ukraine's vital infrastructure, we experience blackouts. Uh, on one occasion, the entire country was plunged into darkness. Um, obviously, um, Energy is being weaponized as part of a hybrid war. Uh, Russia's Gazprom has halved natural gas supplies to Moldova that has also jeopardized our uh, access to uh, traditional sources of electricity supplies. Uh, that forced us to go into the EU market and source both uh, electricity and gas at European prices, something that's completely prohibitive for for our state budget um, and for our uh, population. The, in the past 12 months, the gas price has increased uh, seven times and electricity uh, four times. Uh, we're obviously looking uh, for some uh, social schemes to cushion the impact of rising prices um, on the population. Uh, but in addition to that, prices on absolutely everything have skyrocketed, including uh, because of the blockade of uh, Odessa which has uh, disrupted all of our s supply chains. Our farmers have also lost um, access to, uh, to markets. Um, what we are doing, we're, we're building resilience across these three uh, sets of, um, of challenges. On security, we're modernizing um, our defenses, working with partners. On energy, we're investing in our um, energy security. Um, we're building electricity connections with the um, European Union. We are sourcing gas uh, from elsewhere. Now, reverse flow is accessible. The pipeline with Romania uh, has been operational as in, and is in use um, for a while. And then, of course, um, on the economic side, we're looking at uh, staged access to uh, EU single market, further liberalization, um, so that we can demonstrate to citizens that European integration works and it works now and, and they can uh, um, start benefiting uh, from it already now before, before the full accession. Thank you, Olga. Vice Minister Dersalia, same question. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, uh, if this, uh, while well, Russia's unprovoked and unjustified invasion in Ukraine had the direct impact on Georgia's security environment, first of all, um, uh, you know that uh, Georgia was uh, and is actually is uh, the target of Russia's hybrid war, mm -hmm. and not only in 90s and in 2008 we fight wars with Russia which uh, ended up with occupation of Georgia's um, uh, territory, 20% of Georgia's uh, territory, uh, where Russia had uh, significant military presence. Uh, but after the war, they, uh, they had to read news, uh, some uh, military presence on the ground and send some military towards Ukraine. But they compensated, tried to compensate it with the increased pressure of the special services on the ground. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the situation is that situation on the ground is not even static, but it's uh, fast deteriorating when it refers to humanitarian and human rights situation. Yes, thank you very People much. People who are uh, living on the... Yes. 
Yes, yes, you can continue. Yeah, you are. Sorry. Yeah, people who are living on the ground literally are uh, used as a hostages uh, to make the pressure on government of Georgia. Yeah. Uh, so the situation on the ground is deteriorating fast. And this is not only about the occupied territories, but we see increased pressure on Georgia uh, mm -hmm. and all these hybrid tools, uh, which previously was applied uh, also on the rest of the Georgia as well. So generally saying the security situation significantly deteriorated. And here I also want to refer as the colleagues uh, uh, from our partner countries also mentioned, uh, but at the same time, Georgia's strategic geographic location makes us a natural bridge between West and East at the same time, uh, serving as a gateway actually for eight landlocked countries of South Caucasus and Central Asia. A crucial link on EU's global connectivity map, connectivity map, sorry, and game changer when it comes to diversification of transfer routes and energy supplies to Europe. Thank you very much.